Welcome back to another Ground Up SCX24 build. And today we're going to be jumping into another WT Micro FJ cab only build on a, you guessed it, Maz Designs cheat code chassis. But since I've just completed an FJ cab on a cheat code XL chassis, I figured we'd uh, do this build just a little bit differently. So as you can see here, I've got a slider already completed and set up. So a little bit of cheating, I guess, if you will, has gone on already. But before we get into the slider setup, since I've got the cab painted up and detailed, I think we'll go through that process real quick and take a look at what comes with the parts with that WT Micro kit. So as you saw, I went with the Tamiya metallic black, and I think that came out really nice. And then the champagne for the roof. And one thing about this roof that I have not seen on any of the prior ones, um, this had a few little pop marks or scratches in it. You can kind of see them in the right light. This one's probably the worst. So if I'd caught that beforehand, I could have filled that with putty. And I think because of the light paint, you know, it, you see it a little bit more, but it's only kind of in a certain certain light that'll catch it. But you can see there's a couple that look a little deeper, but it's not going to kill it for me. I still think it uh, is next to perfect as far as the print quality. But uh, for the items that come with the kit, you're now getting the lenses on the risers, which is nice. You can cut them off yourself. The magnets were pre-installed in the sliders and I could not get them pried out. And since I'm going to be using the mass design sliders for the cheat code, I went ahead and ordered the same magnets that WT Micro uses on the kit. So I've got these installed on the mass sliders. And then of course I had a free set here with the WT Micro that I went ahead and glued in. So the body besides the roof and the grill attached is basically ready to go. Um, last thing, you get the two magnets up front, which I'm not going to use either. I'm going to be using the Maz Designs magnets and mounts. So anyways, that's the basic kit right there from WT Micro. It does come raw resin. So here's the, uh, the Willy body. So this is what you'll get out of the gate. So it's a super clean print, lots of detail. I mean, you don't have to do really any cleanup to the body at all. The only thing I do, if you notice, like under the top of the window edge, there's a few little bumps and uh, under the bottom edge here of the body, that is the only thing. And I think that's from the resin risers. So I just take a little sanding stick, go around that about a minute of work. That's it. Wash the body, prime it, paint it, and uh, you're going to come out with something uh, really nice. And then just add a little detail work to it. And man, these things can look next to real. So now that's basically the body. So let's take a quick look at the chassis setup. I figure before we jump into kind of the tuning and the setup of the actual chassis, we'll go through the components that come with the uh, TI cheat code kit. So you get the rails, of course, and you get the standard Maz sliders that go with those. You get six of the large magnets, which I'm not using two. I've got four in place up here already. And then you get the high front mount with the two magnets. And then you get the flush rear mount with the single magnets, which I'm not using either of those on this build. This flush mount double magnet comes with the FJ sliders. So you'll need that because that cab sits so low. And then for the rear, I'm using a flush mount cross member from the V2 XL kit that I didn't end up using. So it just looks cleaner because it has no magnet mount. Otherwise, I would be using, I think, that guy or just another aluminum cross brace. But uh, that's basically the kit right there. And you get some micro nuts, which come in handy for... Uh, attaching things to those frame rails. You also get the uh, cross tray here, which I've already got installed. 
So let's take a quick look here at this chassis. So I guess the first thing to get to this point is I needed to get a few parts together. So let's take a look at those axle assemblies. So as you can see, not a lot of trouble. Those went together pretty easy. The only issue I had was making the nice fitting Maz Designs brass diff cover work with the no-name uh, aluminum axle housing. So this was a takeoff. You can see it's used from another build, just uh, you know, ordered off of eBay a long time ago. So you saw it had just a really kind of flat stubs on those bearing retainers. So once I kind of sanded those down, that made it up just fine, but uh, no real issues there. And then the links are the RC Steve 710. And I actually had him make these links for the skid being shifted forward. So you can see that's where this skid is. It's shifted in the forward position, so that's maybe like three millimeters forward. So his links give you longer rears and shorter fronts to accommodate that. But you can see on the bottom, that's not an RC Steve link. Those are Enjora links. So what the deal was in test fitting that cab on there, once I got the links and everything set up, I found that the whole front end was sitting a lot further back than my prior cheat code build, and I'll show a shot of that. So I found with some tweaking that I needed to uh, kick this front end out, basically lengthen the front. So I ended up moving his upper links and unscrewing them quite a bit. But uh, I had to move them forward and unscrew them to get the length I needed, and then I used a JLU lower and only unscrewed it maybe one turn. And that was just perfect. I actually had to go to a button head screw up front to clear it. So I'll, I'll pop this cab on here, make sure that's sitting good. And then uh, let's take a look at this. Look at that. So it's just exactly like the other cheat code, just missing that grill. I mean, by a hair. So that is what you got to have, and that will get you sitting nice and low with this setup. But uh, one thing I did notice, and I had to play with a little bit on this one, which I didn't really notice on my XL build, which I have here, was the servo horns conflicting with the front of the chassis. So in this setup, with everything shifted forward and uh, a little different setup, I got it to just miss the servo horns with the front of the frame because on twisting, I was actually catching those. So I couldn't get like a super nice clean action right here. So this is set up really well, really liking that, no issues with it. Didn't do anything to the rears. So those are still, should have me in the kind of stock position with this guy. But let's take a, a look at the differences here between this and this XL. So this guy is in the regular transmission skid position. So it's, I guess, further back and this one's further forward. It's right at the frame breakover. You can see this one's back. So I use the regular JLU links on the front, but I had to lengthen the lowers like two or three or four turns on each end 
and then I had to really tighten up the uppers and put them on the furthest back lower riser to basically get the same setup that I've got over here. Um, and that ended up pulling this guy back just to clear that grill the exact same way. But what I really didn't pick up on on the XL build was this actually doesn't get the servo horns out in front of the frame. So there is that potential right there to hang up and snag. So I just didn't catch that last time. So I may have to do some further tuning. But uh, one thing that's really nice is these bodies are perfectly interchangeable. So as long as you do the magnets the same, you should have no issues. Of course, my cord went a little crazy on me. Get this in. And this should just right, right over it. So just exactly perfect. So let's look at that clearance. So same deal. I mean, it's just right there. So it's weird. It's like the caster is the same. You end up with the servo horn being the same, but the servo ears are in a different spot on the frame. So anyways, I may go back to this one and tweak it a little bit. But so far, I think this setup is probably superior in my mind, having the transmission forward, the motor forward, getting that weight forward. It took just one turn forward adjustment on the lowers, and then you've just got to get a kind of a custom upper, a shorter upper, and play with that. But uh, can't beat that right there. So that is basically the setup. Everything else was basically the same. I had to sand a lot more off of the inside edge of these sliders for some reason. To get the body to fit. Um, same Enjora spacers for the shocks. Basically everything the same to this point. So I think what we're missing here is the middle section. So we're going to take a look at some motors. So you can see I've got two options on the table. So originally because that transmission is shifted forward on the skid and the shorter links in front, I had planned on MoFo's old school Nano Beast 2.0. So this is my only remaining one that I've got. So if I don't have to use it because of fitment, I won't. I'll save that until it's needed. So I've got the NanoBam, and I'm thinking this may actually work now because of the link adjustments in the front and kind of kicking everything forward a little bit for the fitment. So I think first off, I'm gonna mount up the NanoBam. I've got a stock transmission and the aluminum motor mount will fit either motor. So if I have to go down to the Nano Beast, that'll be my second option. But first off, I think we're gonna try the big boy, see if it'll fit. And if so, we'll just go ahead and move forward with it. Okay, got this NanoBam installed and it looks like it's going to work. It looks like. However, it is not going to work. So you can see the can sticks under the magnet mount right there on the cross brace. So the way the motor's rotated right now, I could actually mount the transmission, but it won't spin because of the spokes. They actually hit that piece. So it's an almost win. And uh, I guess for me, I don't want to move that cross brace forward because that is going to limit how far that servo can get up in the frame. And I've got it right now, even with the magnets, which would be the bottom of the hood. I'm fully compressed, so I wanna keep it riding low. So that means I'm gonna to have to go to a smaller motor. So I think that Nano Beast 2.0 is gonna be the solution, just a little bit shorter can, and that'll clear that. But for anyone else that doesn't have access to a smaller motor, you're probably gonna to wanna to run that skid in the normal position and scoot everything back the three millimeters and that will solve that issue. So I'm gonna do a quick motor swap. We'll be back to uh, where we are here and then we'll look at getting some drive shafts on here. Nano Beast to the rescue once again. So plenty of clearance now with that shorty in there. So I know I said drive shafts, but you know me before I get anything uh, hooked up to the drive line. I like to do a little test here. So I went ahead and programmed 
the MoFo Rockwolf ESC with the little program and a USB-C cable to the computer. Now you've got to download software from MoFo RC and you need to go ahead and program it to actually set a low voltage cutoff because it does not come with that turned on. And then for this, because I'm using a different motor than the NanoBAM, which it's pre-programmed for, I went in and I changed the uh, KV and I didn't have to change the uh, pole or slot count or anything. It was just the KV was different. And I checked with Nick on that. But uh, basically, if you know your motor spec, you can adjust it real easily. So I'll put some shots of the user interface and kind of the steps on the screen, but it's pretty basic. And again, MoFo's got instructions on his site. So let's get this guy actually turned on and give it a little test here and then we'll get some drive shafts hooked up to it. And I went ahead and centered the servo and turned the dual rate down to like 60 or no, I think I turned it down to like 40% just to make sure I wasn't going to bend anything. So not at full uh, throw or full speed. Well, I guess it is full speed. It's 6.5 volts at 3 amps. It's non-adjustable, so that's the BEC. So let's give this motor a little spin here. So nice and quiet with those plastic gears. And of course the motor has a hardened steel gear on it. nice and smooth and this is 2s i will be running this on 3s wow just just super smooth going from super low just no transition at all right there very nice very smooth so looks like everything works quick little test so i'll get the drive shafts out we'll get those installed drive shafts are in and it is another almost win so of course the rear can get to full compression the front not so much so because of these links the rear is stretched which is not an issue with this uh, longer spline shaft of these metal axles, but the front is actually shortened. So that's my problem. I'm binding up right here before I can get full compression out of these shocks. So it looks like the solution is gonna be getting a Dremel cutoff wheel and taking maybe a couple millimeters off of that shaft. And that should allow me to get full compression and get the servo back up to where it was. So it looks like this shifted transmission is again coming up to uh, bite me a little bit. But uh, anyways, we're gonna stick with it and make this modification and that should be the end of it. After a quick snip to that front drive shaft, well, let's check this out. So we are back to full compression there on the front, sitting right down on that servo. Let's take a look at this. So you can see the heat actually discolored it a hair there at the end. So definitely don't hold this by hand. I was using little clamps and some of the rubber on the clamp ends actually melted off to the drive shaft. Of course, it came right off the drive shaft, but just to show you, that's how hot it gets. But you can see I left myself just a little bit of gap there. Nice clean cut there, nice and flush. So it looks like that's gonna solve that issue. So now I think with everything uh, hooked up and nice and functioning, I think it's time for one more test Make sure the axles are all good and I'll get that steering adjusted.
moving right along. I decided to leave you guys out of the driveline test. Went ahead and did that myself and adjusted the servo. Once that was done, as you saw, I went a little bit further. I decided to go ahead and get all the electronics installed since I had a template to go by that took no time at all. With that, I went ahead and did the LEDs and lenses, got the grill in, got the hood magnets glued in and the roof glued on. So you are looking at almost the finished product here, but you know what's left. My favorite thing, the glaring omission at the axles, wheels and tires. And with that, I think it's gonna clue you in as to why I chose the champagne gold and metallic black paint scheme, which I am pretty pumped to get those wheels on. So without further delay, let's take a look at those and pick out some tires for them. Okay, my favorite part of the build, wheels and tires. But where are the tires? Actually, where's the uh, other wheel? So we're gonna be doing this one a little different than typical. So I'm not sure what tires are gonna be using. I know it's gonna be a, a smaller tire build and I've got a few to choose from. So I've actually been doing a little test fitting. That's why I'm missing one wheel. But as far as the wheels, these are Hobby Soul uh, adjustable offset wheels. And I've used these before on my deadbolt build a long time ago, the version with the blue ring and the silver face. And as soon as I saw them come out with this champagne color, I picked up this set with the black rings and I've been dying to get this on a build. So these have the adjustable face slash hub. So you can pull it off and you can mount it on this side and that will give you a shallow face and it will give you a positive offset versus this negative offset. But for this guy, since we didn't do any axle wideners or extensions, I definitely want that negative offset to kick these wheels out. And you know me, I definitely like the deep dish look, but uh, these just look perfect. I'm not sure if that's coming off uh, on camera or, or coming across on camera, but it is just a perfect match to that champagne gold. So really, really excited to get some tires mounted up to these. So in test fitting, it looks like uh, it's gonna be around a 4850 maybe so i've got some uh, rc four wheel drive thornbirds mounted up here kind of test fitting those i think i'm going to end up using some crawler innovations foams but uh anyways like i say i've got four or five small tires to play with so i think i'm going to mount those up on my own see what i can come up with and we'll come back and take a look at them and for the alternates i'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag I caved and got the reversed version of those. So the black face with the champagne ring, I just couldn't resist. I know it's the exact same wheel. I usually do two different wheels for an alternate, but I think that's gonna be magical. So anyways, I've got two sets of tires to sort, two sets of wheels, and I'll be back. All right, I think I have landed on my first combo of wheels and tires. As you can see, I went with the RC four wheel drive BFG KM3s. So kind of the classic mud terrain there. But I think those look really killer on this. Give it kind of that classic uh, comp look. These are very good performers. They clock in at just over 50 millimeters, I believe. They're in the nice gummy, soft, sticky S2X3 compound. So I think these are gonna work just perfect. So let me move this guy around a little. Still get plenty of uh, approach angle with this uh, nose here being so snubbed. So let's look at the clearances here. That full lock. So we are just right there at the body. So just perfect. Let's check the nose. So again, it is just kissing it right there. So I think that's gonna be perfect. And I did end up venting these guys giving them a half of a Crawler Innovations foam with a soft in the front and the mediums in the rear. I'll show a photo of that, just comparing kind of the width of a full to a half to the stock foam that comes in these. But these guys feel really nice and gummy. I think those are gonna work out just great. So super happy with this first choice. So I think with that out of the way, let's take a look at the second combination. 
Okay, for the second set, we are going a little more aggressive. As you can see, I've got these sweet RC four-wheel drive Thornbirds. Just super chunky, nice giant side lug. And these guys are pretty small as well. I think these are coming in under 50 millimeters, but just a super killer looking tire, especially on an open wheel setup like this. I'll flip this guy around. You get to see that full tread pattern, but I think these just look super aggressive with the black wheels. Nice little stance, and these, since they're a little bit smaller, these tuck in just perfectly. So these do not hit. These were basically just barely touch it there. I feel like these were made for it. Let's look at that front approach. So we still get plenty there with these. So I am super happy with the second set. I think that changes the look totally. Definitely looks meaner. But I do feel bad since I didn't really surprise you with an alternate set of wheels. I did, uh, however, forget to mention I added some Enjora scale hubs. I think that rounded out the look. But since no surprise for the alternates, I think I'm going to throw a little bit of a wild card at you. Okay back with some wild card wheels and tires on and these are some Enjora aluminum wheels and power hobby defender tires so these tires are about the same height as the thornbirds but they are quite a bit wider giving this thing just a killer stance look at that that is just super mean right there so just a little bit uh a little bit wider than these guys but I think these look awesome they were definitely in the running so I'm glad I had a third set of wheels that uh, was pretty appropriate for this and I vented these guys in the front and I ended up just using the stock foams that came with them because I swapped out the aluminum rings to the Enjora brass rings and those are vented so when I got to the rear I left the tires unvented but they still have a nice vent through that ring and uh, just kept the stock foams in this set and uh, crawl innovations in the other two sets but because of these have such a, a different lug pattern like a big chunky uh, lug that keeps the rubber from flexing as much whereas these don't so these can flex really easy from the sidewall. So having a little bit stiffer uh, stock foam in here, I think is probably a better way to go. But uh, it just sometimes it depends, I think, on the actual pattern of the lug. Even with the same compound tire, one can feel super soft and floppy. And I'm referring to like a Patagonia versus like these guys. And that's because these have the big knobby treads. But Anyways, I think this is a success for some wild cards. So nice three sets of rims here. And I think I've got one more little surprise maybe to take this wild card over the top. What if we just do a full wild card truck? Look at that. That is just super sick. <laughs> That red and black, wow, that was meant to be right there. So that is the nice thing about just setting up your magnets exactly the same. You've got interchangeable cabs at will. So I'm already thinking maybe I'll buy another cab and just paint it up differently just to have some more options. But anyways, so that's uh, the wild card. So I think that basically completes the build here. So I think let's uh, maybe check in on the scales and see where we ended up. Okay, got set on here and almost settled out here. It looks like at 423. And look at that great front bias at 6040. Of course, there's no battery in there yet, but the battery is going to sit kind of midsection. So we'll see if that has any effect. But so far, so good. Very happy with that. And all of the wheels did end up weighing around the same uh, weight, around 31 grams, and I'll show a photo of that. 
So I'm not going to weigh each different set. I think uh, we'll just do this one and go from there. So I think I'm going to pop the battery in and see if that makes any difference. All right, battery is in. We are settled out here and it doesn't look like any of the ratios changed at all, which is great because we were right on the dot there and we still are. So bump us up to 438 and a half basically. So not too bad, still kind of a mid-weight, uh, not super light, but not super heavy build. So anyways, those are the stats. Okay, we are powered on. Figured we'd do a quick little test before we get the wheels on the ground. Take a look at the overdrive, make sure there's no binding with these wheels on. So let's go here. I left this cab off so we can get a good look at this motor. Look at that creep. Speed it up a little bit. Just super smooth. Definitely got some overdrive in the front. We've got our tape misaligned. There we are, back to alignment. So it feels smooth. I don't think anything is binding. Nice and smooth at full lock. I think we're ready to get this thing on the table. Time for a little tabletop test. Let's creep this guy up. See how slow we can go here. If you've got the patience. Look at that creep. We are moving. Nice and slow. Very smooth. Let's speed this guy up a little. Articulation here. Stretch it out. Very nice. All right, next obstacle. So we've got this little wall to climb. So approach angle, perfect. Not hitting the nose at all. Just creep it up. BFGs are just gripping. See if we can hook up on this last ledge. This is just like that slick plastic rock you find in nature. See if those back tires will grab. Give it a little more juice. Give ourselves a little wiggle. There it is. Very nice. Up and over. And dropping off the back. Nice. Next obstacle. Next up, we've got the ramp, but we'll hit it a little bit different. Take a little of this ledge with it. See if we can't get twisted up right here. tire down. I got a control. It's just so smooth, so slow. Look at those sliders just clear in the top of that. Just perfect. Bring it on down. And there we are. Very nice. 
time to hit this RTI ramp square on. So I went ahead and unplugged those headlights since this guy's coming right at us. So let's see if we can get up here to the peak and keep that back tire on the ground. So there is the very top right there and we are firmly planted on the ground. Looks like we have a little more to go. We actually have quite a bit more than the RTI ramp, so great articulation there. Man, that feels nice and smooth with those shocks. Just love those hot racing oil shocks. Take this wall a little different since we're queued up. Look at that compression. Those foams, great grip from these tires. Just can't beat these BFGs. One of the best small little tires. Let's see if we can hook up here. Nice CVD steering angle there. Look at that. Give us a little wiggle. See if we can hook up on the plastic. There it is. High clearance links. Just right on over the top. Very nice. Very nice. All right, time to bring it on home. Figured we'd do a little descent down this stepped face here. Oh, no problem. Nice and controlled. Might as well flex it out on the way back. Very nice. Man, this thing is just a monster. A tiny tire monster. Get that flex. Get twisted. Very nice. What it looks like. Everything is working just fine. It looks like the articulation is great. Steering's great. Motor is super smooth. So I think the tabletop test is a success. All right, back with the other set of wheels and tires swapped on. You know I had to do it. I love the look of these. Those Thornbirds look so good. And if you have a keen eye, you may notice I added one final bit of scale detail, and that would be these black Enjora D-ring shackles on the rear of the frame. So these worked out a little different than I was uh, planning, but I still think they look pretty good. So initially, I moved this crossbar back to the position they're mounted, put those on the rear, but I really didn't like the little pieces of frame sticking out beyond this, I guess, bumper, if you will. So I moved it back to kind of the bumper position. And then because of these frames, uh, the slots in the frames, I ended up adding another piece of hardware and a micronut behind these. So they're not just sliding all around, but uh, that was the compromise there. So they're mounted kind of inboard of the bumper, but I still get a nice kind of flush surface across the back. So I'm happy with that, and in doing that, I ended up getting a two-pack of those Enjoros with some black and some red shackles. So I thought, hey, let me take a look at my other one. And uh, because this one's set up a little different, you can see I was able to mount those at the rear of the frame. So on this one, I have the crossbar move forward in this position. That's because I've got the cage zip-tied down to it, so the end of the frame was free. So these guys worked well right there. And the red, of course, just works so well with this red cab. Let's see if I can get this whole guy in the frame. Nice little splash of color there on the rear. So, you know, you're never really done with your builds. So here we are. And I think with that, we have finalized. So let's finish this up. Well, it's that time again. We are at the end of another build, and I gotta say, I'm super stoked about this. 
Just loving the champagne wheels. Both sets of them, I think, look great. And uh, just turned out great with the matching roof and grill. And I really like this exposed TI rail for the back. So I'm glad I used the cage on the carbon version. I think this has a really good look, just being all kind of black and metal. Get these guys out of the way. But just super stoked about this little guy. Very happy with these hot racing oil shocks and the uh, Mofo Rockwolf ESC. Of course, is uh, the second install for me and performing just as good with this Nano Beast as it is with the Nano Bam. So the next thing for me is to install it with a uh, Torque Beast X and try it out on a brush motor. But uh, man, just super stoked about this little guy. So glad Maz came out with these sliders to incorporate the WT cab onto the cheat code chassis. It just gets you uh, sitting so much lower than the traditional, even LCG chassis that this is set up for. I mean, it's just nuts how low that thing sits. But uh, anyways, it's been a fun one. It was fairly easy this time since it was basically uh, a copy for the front half, a little different suspension. But uh, anyways, I want to say thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly did. And I can't wait to get this out and actually drive it on a course and see how it really performs. But until next time, thanks for watching.